Come in, darling. I've been expecting you. Oh my gosh, what's going on? You having a party or something? I don't know. Some of you may know my roommate, Elvira. She was kind of famous in the 80s. Hello, darling. Come in, come in. Uh, I actually live here, but uh, I didn't know you were having a party. You know, I'd like to stay, but... And you're bound to have a good time. Yeah, but I actually have to film an air gun video. And I know a lot of these guys right here have contracts to be on the air gun channel already. So, like, yeah, I am going to be doing videos with all these guys, but I wasn't planning on having a party today. Oh, my gosh, somebody's here. Hold on. Who's there? Is that you? I think it's a pizza guy. It's like Domino's or something. It's a pizza pie. Mmm, how yummy. Oh, my gosh, I'm not paying for this. All right, thanks. All right, I got your pizza in there, but you guys are going to all have to leave because I got to film a, a video right now. So get out of here, Trods. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Air Venturi, shoot him down, metal silhouette, fill targets. You got to take off. Oh, yeah, all right, no problem. Yeah, I'll see you later. I'll see ya. Umarex Big Blast Target Caps. Yeah, I know we got Umarex Big Blast Target Caps 2 coming out, and it's going to be totally off the hook, but that's not for a little bit yet, so you got to leave. Yeah, no problem, man. Hey, thanks for having us, too. Yeah, thanks, ma'am. See you guys. 50 caliber Lee bullet mold for my Umarex hammer in 320 grain, as recommended, so I can take my old pellets and melt them into new slugs for my 50 caliber Umarex hammer that's not even available yet. Sorry, bro, you need to go. Yeah, well, no problem there. I'll see you later. Daisy Rocket Shot, I know you're brand new, and you are one of the most exciting brand new stars of the air gun world, but yeah, I'm sorry, you gotta come back when it's time for your video. I think it's gonna be maybe tomorrow or the next day. I'll go ahead and shoot you a text. Okay, thanks, mister. I'll see you later. Sig Sauer X5 full weight CO2 powered blowback pellet gun. So this is something everyone's wanted is uh, what I just mentioned right there. So now there is one. It's super badass. Also comes in silver and this guy's gonna be in a video real soon. Can't wait to make a video on this. I'll probably do it some night when I can't go outside but I can shoot this in my house with all my special pellet traps. So that's gonna be real exciting. This is coming up for the end of the month for sure. But yeah, I know you should be in the VIP room. Sig X5, yeah, sorry bro, you gotta go. Roger that, sir, and thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you later. See ya, X5. Hey, Elvira, why don't you go check on your pizza? Um, I don't know. No, I'm... It might be getting cold. Why don't you get some plates for these guys? I won't bite. Yeah, I know you're not going to bite anybody, but just check on the pizza. I don't want to have cold pizza. Um, my name's Elvira, but you can call me tonight. Elvira, you live here. Okay, I'm not going to call you. You just talk to me if you're here. Or if I'm gone, I'll call you. Fine. Anyway, TAC 45. I don't know who else you guys got back there. Anyway, TAC 45. The 4.5 millimeter CO2 powered tactical BB gun that kicks butt for around 99 bucks. With a free bipod. Sorry, friend. You got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. The Byrock Sport HW44. Yeah, it's no surprise you'd be hanging out with Elvira. You're definitely uh, on top of the world right now. That's because he was named... 2018 air pistol of the year and you can see why anyway yeah hw i know that you're going to be coming here for some 50 100 yard shots and i don't know you might even win the long ranger challenge i don't put, put nothing past you but yeah right now uh, i got a, a video so you got to take off ja, that's no problem i'll see you later bye oh thanks for having me to your party i'll invite him to the party at the end of the year cross the legacy now, I know that you're a dual ammo, 177 caliber, 1,000 feet per second pump gun that you can get at any Walmart any time. But yeah, you gotta take off, bro. Oh, well, yes, okay, that's fine with me. Yes, uh, I'll see you later. Yes, goodbye. Now, I don't know you. Who are you? I'm the Crossman QB. Do you even know your own name, bro? Of course I do. Of course I do. I'm the Crossman 1077. Hold on. Yeah? I mean, I'm the, I'm the Crossman 1077W, son. Oh, yeah, cool. Eh? It's nice to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you. So what are you all about? Well, I'm a CO2-powered badass gun. Oh, yeah? How much do you cost? 
Oh, I don't know. Around a hundred bucks, maybe. Give or take twenty bucks. Oh, so is there anything special about you other than the fact that you take CO2 and that you shoot pretty hard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of badass stuff about me. You'll just have to watch the Airgun Channel review to really get all that, but I'll tell you one thing. I got fiber optic sights. Oh, really? That's cool. I mean, hey, I guess it was cool to meet you. Oh, yeah, yeah. One more thing, dude. Yeah, I am semi-automatic. What? You're semi-automatic? Oh, yeah, you do. You load me up with pellets or BBs and all. Sling some lead down range like you wouldn't believe. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know you were semi-auto, but... Actually, uh, let me get your number, and uh, maybe I'll give you a call if you want to be on the Airgun channel or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, ch check that out. Well, I'll see you later. All right, see ya. Don't forget your box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, one of those partygoers dropped their magazine. Oh, that's mine. Yeah, let me get that. There you go. All right, I'll see you later, man. I'll give you a call. All right, thanks. Bye. Hammerly, I see you back there. Or Hammerly, whatever your name is. Dude, you know what? I'm tempted to let you stay over because, I mean, let's just face it, you are the most badass CO2 powered air gun available. And I mean, you can be converted to like high pressure air and stuff like that. And I know, I know, I mean, as far as CO2 guns go, I mean, you're, you're it, you're the elite, you're, you're the bomb. So anyway, since you got that cool muzzle break and your last name's Magnum, I'm going to go ahead and I was wondering if you just want to hang out, you can stay in my guest room. Until we film your video later this month. Oh, that is really nice of you. Oh, yeah, man. Make yourself a home. Fridge is full of whatever you want. Walmart's right down the street. we got a Starbucks next door. And I'll hit you up when it's time to make your video. All right, man. That sounds great. I'll catch you later. All right, bro. Marauder. Now, I know you got a Boyd stock on you. You know, you're mighty, mighty good-looking gun. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, I'm sorry. I already got a gun. Oh, well, um, I was kind of thinking we might hang out and then I could be in one of your videos, too. Um, I think you already know that you work for me under contract and you're already in one of my videos and you have your exclusive video coming up. Oh, well, I was just thinking, um... Yeah, I'm sorry. I really got to get back to work here. Okay, well, I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you later. I'll see you when we do your video. Okay, bye-bye. Gosh, that took forever. All right, anyway, I'm going to go eat some pizza. Be right back with the Diana Chaser. Thanks for the pizza, Elvira. That was pretty good. Hello, darling. Uh, I actually saw some like weird chicks on my near the front. Do you think you might be able to go check that out? Who do those girls think they are anyway, snooping around like that? Charlie's Angels or something? Yeah, I don't know. I, I know I'm getting a package delivered, though. What right do they have poking their little noses? Their cute little turned up noses. Yeah, just go to the front. I mean, I am covered by PayPal because PayPal covers air guns. They don't cover firearms, but they cover air guns. So, I'm covered by PayPal, but I still don't want to get my package stolen. So, yeah, if you could go check that out for me, that'd be great. Sure. And do you need any help, or, like, do you need an escort? Um, I don't know. No, I'm pretty safe in here. I mean, I got my industrial strength bra in here. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. I'm actually pretty sure there's no package today, but I'm just sending her up there to get rid of her. So, this right here is the Diana Chaser Rifle Kit. And this is pretty much what you're going to get if you order it. There's the end of the box just to show you. Apparently it's a CO2 powered bolt action pellet gun. This one's 22 caliber. It also comes in 177. Adjustable rear sights, manual safety, and it actually has a lot more. So now one of the coolest things about the Diana Chaser rifle and pistols is that they come with this awesome padded case. So this is like nylon or I don't know whatever it's made out of. And it's got foam padded cutout in there. And uh, it's pretty awesome. It's definitely going to protect your chaser. It has a little handle right there. There it is right there. And I'll see what happens when we open it. All right, there it is. So basically what you get is a Diana Chaser pistol. I believe this has a 10-inch barrel. And actually, just let me look up some stats real fast. Be right back.
Okay, the Dynax Chaser pistol is $69.99 at Pyramid Air for just the pistol. And it's a fine hunk of steel. Okay, if you know what I mean. If you want to know more about it, just watch my Diana Chaser pistol review. Super accurate. Really awesome. I mean, definitely the best 60 bucks I've ever spent on a CO2 pistol. I mean, that's what's going to cost you for a Walmart BB gun. And this thing is a formidable air gun, let's just say. So this rifle kit is 22 caliber. Like I say, they come in 177 and 22. Now, this pistol right here is going to shoot 525 feet per second. But... Let's say that you decide to add this 17.7 inch barrel, okay, that's your rifle kit. You just pop off the 8 inch barrel and this pops right on. Now this moderator right here, 10 millimeter threaded, and you can put the moderator on the pistol. You can leave it on here, this is detachable. 17.7 inch rifle barrel. So if you want to spend 119 you get all this. Now you also get this stock, we'll show you how to put that on in a second. This is an extra barrel band for when you put your rifle on here. You want to have a barrel band for it and it puts the rear sight in a different place. It has adjustable rear sights, fixed front sights on both these bad boys. Super easy to take the barrel in and on and off. You just do three screws right here. I'll show you how to do it. You can store an extra CO2 in the butt right here as well as the CO2 that goes in here. It's got a little CO2 handle that comes out. It unscrews for right there. You put it in there, do your CO2, put it back in, and you're set. So I'll show you how the stock goes on there. So right here is your butt stock, so let me just get this out. Okay, so here's our pistol. We're just going to undo this. Now your CO2 doesn't go in here. This is just for your, there is a CO2 storage in there, so you can have an extra CO2 in the field. Now after you pull out that wing nut thing, you just slide that off. And now there is where your CO2 goes. Okay, it takes little 12 gram CO2 cartridges like this. You just right in there. Then you just take your skeletonized buttstock, which by the way has a really nice rubber pad right there. And you just slide the end on right like that. It actually fits nice and tight. But now there you go, you got your CO2 in there. Just take your wing nut right here and screw it back in and you're all done. Perfect, look at that bad boy gonna be really awesome with a moderator on it get that moderator on there you're gonna be looking good boy that's super cool and here's that butt pad it looks like it has a little o-ring sort of thing right there but nice solid rubber and this is just a nice polymer stock this right here is a polymer we got a plastic trigger guard nice looking trigger this is actually a two-stage adjustable trigger and of course this is all metal the other cool thing I like about it is it has a CO2 indicator in here. It lets you know if you have a CO2 loaded. Now you probably shouldn't leave your CO2 in there while you're storing it because that kind of screws up the grommet can uh, and wear out your gun a little quicker. So I like to take them out. You can see it's got a really stylish stock right there. Now here's the part that I was talking about right there. It's gnarled. You just unscrew that. And I'll, by the way, you got a thread protector right here. 10 millimeter. So you can put your LDC on there or whatever you want. You just unscrew this, slip it in right there, and that allows you to get a little leverage when you're putting your CO2 in and out. It also says don't tighten this down with no CO2 in there, or no, it says when you have an expelled CO2, don't tighten the crap out of this. Anyway, just read the instructions, it says something about that. The other thing I like is this bolt, it's super cool, it's got the O-rings right there. It shares a lot of parts with the uh, Diana Action line which the Storm Rider is one of them. Now this comes with a single shot tray, which I really like. Check this out. It's actually magnetic. Got a little magnet right there. Watch this. Clicks in there like that. So really high quality. This is really finished, really machined very well. So I can't wait to get the rifle barrel on here. So apparently the Chaser Rifle Kit also comes with these Allen wrenches and these are probably little o-rings for where your barrel goes. Okay guys, remember to put the piece that you took out of your stock away. That's what your case is for. Like I said, this comes off so there's a place for that too. There's a place for a scope right here. The o-rings go on the end of your barrel right here. Let me just show you. The middle screw is going to end up going in here. 
show you what I'm talking about. Right here is the top of your Diana Chaser action. So if you see those three screws to the right, basically you completely remove the two outer screws and then the middle screw you're going to loosen most of the way until the barrel pulls out. All right, looks like this is going to turn out to be my smallest Allen wrench. Two millimeter. Now, if you see these three screws right here, you basically completely remove the outer two screws and then loosen most of the way the middle screw and then your barrel should just pull right out. You probably want to take the CO2 out of your gun. Definitely make sure there's no pellets. You're going to want to cock this back, put it on safety, all that good stuff. Okay, I removed my CO2. That was super smart of me. Looks like it's not two millimeter. Hold on a second. So it must be like 1.5 millimeter or something. Make sure, of course, that the Allen wrench is seated all the way in before you start to turn it. There, it actually came out really easy. So I'm going to loosen this one like three quarters of the way. Oh, it came out. Fine. Just don't lose that. Like I say, so get your Allen wrench in. Make sure it's in there all the way. Seated perfectly. It's a snug little fit there. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to completely remove these. So I just ended up completely removing all three. For the rest of you at home... We're going to take this barrel, and really you need to take both barrels when you get your Diana Chaser Rifle Kit, which comes again with the pistol and the rifle thing. You need to take your barrel out and clean it with a nylon cleaning rod. You never clean an air gun barrel with a metal cleaning rod, because an air gun barrel, the end of the barrel, is what's called the crown. It's where the threads end, and that's super important because an air gun bullet doesn't have the velocity of a firearms bullet. And so it really, really, really relies on these riflings to get everything just right. And if you screw the crown up on the end of your barrel, game over for your gun. So never shove a metal cleaning rod down here. You can use a crown saver, which I'll demonstrate in a second. But I want to show you something else about these air gun barrels. And i got to set this shot up, so hold on one second. Hey guys, this right here is the end of my Diana Chaser barrel, and I want to show you something. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in on this. Closer. Okay guys, so that right there is your barrel. That's really funny because I was about to show you how clean it looks to the naked eye, but now I can see with the zoomed in camera. Look at all that grunge. Okay, see that grunge around the rifle grooves right there? That's what we're about to clean off. So if you shoot your air gun with all those little pieces of grease in there, which every single new air gun has in there, no matter where you buy it at, then you're going to screw up your accuracy big time. Or small time, you probably never even know it, but your gun would have been a lot more accurate if you clean it out. So you're going to have to clean your air gun barrel. Every time you get a new air gun, you have to clean your new air gun barrel. So we're going we're gonna to do that. Luckily, I didn't knock these on the floor just then when I was filming that. Definitely put your screws away as soon as you take them out until you put them back in. All right, just in case you decide to buy the pistol only kit right here, Let's just go ahead and pop this barrel off. Now you don't have to worry about the barrel going back on the right way because it has a detent screw that's going to hold it exactly in place. Straight up and down. Alright, that's a perfect fit. So this is all loose. Don't use any tools or anything. It should just happen with your hand and you probably don't want to wrench on this. But let's just see what happens here. Oh my gosh, that came right out. See, I barely twisted it. It's popping right out. Of course, you want to be really careful. So right there, there's the end of your barrel. So it looks like this little detent screw, the hole's in the bottom. The detent screw is in the top. Look at that little snub nose looking thing. Scary. Hops number nine is not good for air gun seals. So a lot of the guys on the air gun forums and stuff that know what's up, they really don't like it when people use hops because it'll basically do bad things to your air gun seals. So I do have to order the Primo stuff and um, I'm going to actually put find out what it is and put it right here. Can you guys see? Okay. So then like just order that stuff instead 
if you're gonna do air guns only but in a pinch you can do uh, hops you know trying to slop it slop it all over too much so this right here is a crown saver and you can get this from Mac one air guns and they're about 10 bucks I like to order two or three of them at a time you can clean a lot of air guns with this but uh, you shouldn't have to really ever clean your air gun except the first time you get it you know if your air gun starts shooting weird then the first thing you can do is give it a cleaning see if that fixes it and if it does yeah maybe you only have to clean your air gun once a year Maybe you have to clean your air gun every 80 shots. So if it's uh, the latter scenario, then you probably got a problem with your air gun. Time to get rid of it. All right, so I'm told this moderator is removable. It must be because there's 10 millimeter threads on the other barrel. So see if I can get it off. Oh, see, that's not happening. So for now, I'm just going to leave this on. I'm going to show you how to clean a barrel that has baffles in it. All right, so this happens every time it's time to film a moderated air gun barrel cleaning video I can't find my drinking straws anywhere even though every single day I look at them in my house so just hold on a second I'll be back in just one second Okay, I found them. So, I like to use neon colors because I find those work the best. So, for 96% of you that watch my videos that are boys, go ahead and grab a blue straw. But then there are 4% of you that are girls that watch my videos, according to my YouTube statistics that come out every month. I am trying to build my female audience, so today we're going to use a pink straw for the ladies. So, if you're a girl and girls can shoot air guns, better than boys actually. Women make better snipers than men. You want to know why? Alright, so I just went in there about that far. So hopefully I made it all the way through. And you'll see the end. You don't want to pull it in too far. Go about right there. Do this real carefully. Okay. Now it's a little more aerodynamic when you shove it down the barrel right there. Alright, so I reached my little end point there and as I thought I wasn't getting through everything so we're having a little problem here. I'm going to put some gloves on and see if I can use uh, my superhuman strength to just pop this free. Hold on one second. I got my special gloves right here. Let's see. Oh, it's reverse threaded, I believe. Oh. No, I just did feel it move though. Oh, something just moved. Oh my gosh, it's on there with Loctite or something. Oh gosh. That doesn't want to move. So we're going to have to figure out how to get through this barrel. I might need a thinner straw. Or sometimes you can straighten out your crown saver. Alright, so let's just put the crown saver down here straight. Alright, so we're through. Good deal. Alright, boys and girls. I got like a patch stuck in there or something. Go the other way. No, you can't do that. Well, I might have to. Okay, whatever it is, it's stuck right here. Here it comes. Oh, nothing's coming out. Okay, so congratulations, Airgun Channel. I'm going to be now be forced to break this off and do whatever it takes to get this LDC off because I've got a patch or something stuck in here, so I will be right back.
right, I was able to get that off by very, very carefully clamping this barrel in there between a couple pieces of wood, putting the vise right over the barrel and hoping that the wood would bend or compress before the barrel would bend it or, or be damaged at all. Definitely don't want to clamp that by itself. As you can see, I was able to get that LDC off and it goes right on the pistol. Okay, so obviously real fast we're going to have to check this out. See what it looks like. Bam. Be like, what? I'm left-handed, fool. And I'm about to put my finger on the trigger. You know, if a can was messing with you. Or a bird. Alright guys, that right there is the end of my rifle barrel. And you can see right there, that red stuff is Loctite. And it is on there thick. So, I gotta just figure out how to clean that off there. Once I get these threads all nice and clean, the moderator that came with my rifle kit will go right on and off there, no problem. Right here you can see my Diana Chaser pistol. Threads are all clean. Goes on easy as pie. See? Perfect. Okay, let's install this rifle barrel. I'm going to take my little screws, which would have been long gone had I not put them in a safe place. Once again, these are 1.5 Allen wrench. But you don't get any extra screws, so be careful. So if you remember, there was three screws right here in the top. So we're going to cock this back. Put your middle screw in a little bit. All right, you just want it in there a little bit. So right here on the end of the barrel, you'll see a little detent, dimple, and then an actual hole. So the actual hole is going to go down, facing down, and the detent's going to be facing up. So this little screw, the middle screw, is going to go right into that detent. All right, so right there, you can see that I got some gunk in the hole, I just noticed. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that out before I put it in there. Probably from when I was running patches through it. Now, you can see these little teeny marks right here. Those are little teeny burrs that are in the very end of this barrel. I guess that's where the barrel meets the uh, receiver in there or whatever. So if there is an O-ring, it's probably in the action already. But anyway, yeah, you could go if you really wanted to and just like knock those little burrs off there. Probably help you out a little bit. Okay, now we're ready with the dimple up. Just slide that baby right in. I would actually like to have this off so I can see. Oh, snapped right in there. Now you can look in here and make sure your dimple's lined up. Oh yeah, it looks actually perfect right there. Okay, so the Allen wrench that came with it are two different sizes. My 1.5 millimeter is long gone at this time, so I'll be right back. I gotta go find it. Lucky duck, I found it, so go ahead and screw this back in there. And once again, like all stuff with guns, we're not going to wrench it down too tight because that will strip it. You just tighten it up, and then you snug it a little bit more, and that's it. Oh, wow, now that is a wicked looking little sniper special right there. So you could have your little Diana case. You could have that in your backpack, like your backpacking gun. Okay guys, one of the things I just discovered is that these two little detent screws are two different lengths. So the outside ones are a little shorter, and then the middle one is a teeny bit longer, a few threads longer. Okay, that went together really nice. That's how easy it is to put your Diana Chaser rifle barrel in. Now, this looks about as awesome as it gets right here. So, so I can't wait to get this thing out and shoot it. Go ahead and get a scope for this baby. Let's see here. Standard H and N field target trophies, the all lead non copper coated versions. We get you know four shots right in about three quarters of an inch with one flying up high. Hold up, Tyler. All right, I just gotta check out that noise. Too bad there's like blood oozing down my walls, but never mind about that. But I got a little better groups with my Diana Chaser than Pyramid Air got. So we got some really impressive groups. This was 15 yards, and I was still fine-tuning, clicking all around, and I could still cover this with a dime. 
Now look at that hole right there. That's a perfect bullseye that I got when I was finally sighted in, and I think that's another shot that I took. So I think I'm sighted in right now. We'll see what we can do. We're definitely going to put this bad boy through the paces. Okay, I just want to throw in a couple of hardcore facts to wrap this video up. Now, definitely, I'd recommend you buy this rifle kit. It's only $119, I believe. Free shipping, Pyramid Air. Great little plinker. But my prognosis on this bad boy is that it's not a 35-yard gun. It's a 25-yard gun. So, basically, with the pistol barrel on there, it's going to shoot about 400 feet per second. And it's going to be very accurate. It's only going to have a standard deviation of 2 feet per second. Over a 50 shot string so that's good so basically phenomenal accuracy with the pistol barrel now with the rifle barrel you also get good accuracy um, apparently the standard deviation is a little different now the rifle barrel I had excellent results shooting at 25 yards I got 10 to 15 shots in a dime size group now one thing to note is you're not going to be able to put it in back in that snazzy case once you get that rifle barrel on there and I'm sure you don't want to take it on and off every time so I got a cool case like this. This is a case that came with my drods. Thought I'd show it off to you guys right there. Now, this is a really cool upgrade. I'd say this was $80,000 for this uh, diamond encrusted LDC. Now, it does come with the LDC. I definitely say, though, if you can afford it, the diamonds do, I think, help with harmonics a little bit. They definitely make it look good. You can get this rifle kit anywhere, $119. Definitely a super fun plinker. At 25 yards, I can hit anything with this. Uh, I must have shot 40 shots in a row. I didn't miss one thing. Uh, when I was done shooting the video last night, I actually went around and actually shot for fun around my yard, and I was hitting every single thing I aimed at. Ton of, ton of fun. It's balanced really well, so you can, you know, you can hold it. You're not going to get tired, and you can actually practice your offhand shooting with something like this, get really good at this, and then move up and wait um, until you got a full-size rifle that you can just hold still when you're standing. So that's something that um, I've never really worked on, so... I might just keep this bad boy around. What I'm probably going to do, though, is pass this on to my buddy and go ahead and order a Crossman Custom Pro Shop KT2400, I believe. Basically, it's kind of like this, but you can get carbon fiber simulated stock and stuff in. Uh, I want to show people how to order those because that was one of the first air guns that I ordered. So we'll check out that later. You are going to have to get your own case if you want to leave it like that, but definitely a really cool gun to have around. Now, 35 yards, I could still shoot, but my groups opened up to about like this. So basically, I was definitely like this 25 yards every time. I did it three or four times, and then, but definitely at 35 yards, it was more like this. So that's what's up with this gun. Uh, at 25 yards or less, you can hit a rat in the head or, you know, hit a nickel-sized, dime-sized group every single time. So I was very impressed with the accuracy. You know, it's a great little kit. You can't beat it for $119. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. From now on, that's how you drive.